Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're gonna talk about galvanic corrosion and why you see it in certain custom loops, but why you don't see it usually in AIOs, uh, because if you tend to combine something like an aluminum radiator, which we see quite a bit of from a company like Thermaltake, and then a copper or nickel-plated copper CPU block, then we've got a problem, right? Uh, but that's what AIOs do, and somehow AIOs can get away with that, and you don't hear too many you know, horror stories about galvanic corrosion uh, taking place, at least in the short term, with an AIO like a Corsair H100i. So why are the two different, seeing as though they're using the exact same metal combos, what exactly is galvanic corrosion, galvanic corrosion, I almost butchered that word, and then what can you do in a custom loop to mitigate it should you be worried about kits that include aluminum rads and copper or nickel plated copper blocks? Because that was a topic that came up quite a bit in my previous video, which you can check out right here. So we're gonna answer all those questions in this one. I'll try to keep it short and sweet, not gonna get too scientific, but in a nutshell, here's what you need to know. Here's what you really need to know about the difference between copper and aluminum. Aluminum is more reactive. It's an active metal in the sense that it will behave like an anode when it's put into a loop with copper, which is going to be the cathode. And whenever you have an anode cathode uh, arrangement, the anode will be stripped of its molecules during that galvanic corrosion process. So aluminum will react if it's raw, pure aluminum, with air, uh, and it will form aluminum oxide. Now the same thing happens to copper. I mean, technically everything oxidizes, but the process is much slower, and that's why it's just a bit more stable in the long run. Now people will take this point and say, well, that's why you shouldn't use aluminum. It's cheaper, it oxidizes quicker, it's just a less noble metal to be using in a custom loop. And yeah, it's definitely cheaper, it's a lot lighter, it has different thermal properties than copper. Copper is a bit more conductive, aluminum lets go of heat a bit more, there's an argument there about which is better in the long run for a CPU or a GPU cooler. But that argument aside, what I want you to take away from this is that yes, aluminum is slightly more reactive, but as its own standalone metal, it's not bad to use in a loop. What can cause problems is when you combine something like an aluminum radiator with a copper CPU block or, I don't know, a, a whatever else would be copper in your loop, a copper graphics card block. Now, a few of you pointed out in our Thermal Take water cooling kit video that they included an aluminum radiator, which they've been using for a long time. A lot of people don't like them because they use aluminum rads. I'm not the biggest fan of them. And for obvious reasons, I think it's a cost saving measure. Uh, I also think that it does induce problems. If you wanna take that radiator and throw it into another loop that will use primarily copper or nickel plated copper, you're gonna run into problems, especially if you're using a coolant design to mitigate the galvanic effects of using copper in a loop. Uh, so I think it's just kind of a slippery slope and they're doing it ultimately to save money. So yeah, I'd like to see the aluminum rads gone. For sure, that's one downside of going with a thermal take radiator uh, or just a thermal take kit that will include a radiator like that. But you guys went so far as to say, well, what are they doing here? They just sold a kit that has an aluminum rad and then a copper or nickel plated copper CPU block. Doesn't that mean that their system is gonna corrode very quickly, right? Because you're sh you shouldn't mix both metals. That's, that's not how it works. And there's an important distinction between having, first off, bare aluminum and bare copper in a loop, right? With a water, let's say, which will act as your electrolyte, right? That transfers that material from the anode to the cathode. That is the process that takes place. And it can happen very fast or very slow, depending on the different chemicals that you add in the water. And that's why the coolant is so important. So C1000 Clear, designed by Thermaltake, is supposed to mitigate the galvanic effects of running an aluminum rad with a nickel-plated copper block or a G GPU that has a nickel plated copper block integrated inside of that. Uh, so we're gonna run some tests with this ultimately, but what I will say at this point is that yes, using this coolant right here will significantly slow down the process of galvanic corrosion versus using, let's say, distilled water. Think of anodes and cathodes like pressure differentials, right? So if aluminum is an active metal and copper is relatively inactive, then the aluminum has a higher pressure and the copper has a lower pressure. So material is gonna flow from the higher pressure variant to the lower pressure variant, that's that flow, that's that galvanic corrosion. The, the electrochemical properties of both metals are what are essentially driving that chemical process. Uh, so, and of course you need your medium, which is water, that electrolyte to transfer those, um, the, those particles from one uh, metal to the other. I'm trying to do this without actually having a script because I, I wanna make sure that I have all these points down and that's why the video is being kind of broken up a bit. Uh, but in that situation, it would be fine because you've combined the same metal everywhere and you're using a medium that is not inherently you know, reactive and that's water. Yeah. <laughs> 
so that's good. Uh, but if you decided to throw in an aluminum rad instead, then you would have a pretty accelerated form of galvanic corrosion taking place in your loop, and you would notice that the aluminum would begin corroding quite a bit, and it would probably begin to wear away the surface of the copper because you're stripping the aluminum of its molecules and basically being very abrasive, right, with that copper surface that the fluid comes into contact with. On top of that, the introduction of aluminum into the fluid itself can corrode, literally corrode or oxidize the copper, which is why copper sometimes turns green or a dark brown uh, when it's been running in a loop for a long time untreated. That is literally oxidation and corrosion taking place due to the fluid and the chemicals and the uh, additives that shouldn't necessarily be in the water uh, or whatever coolant is being used in the loop. Now, what about AIOs? How do all-in-one liquid coolers for CPUs or graphics cards get away with combining typically aluminum radiators with copper or nickel-plated copper CPU blocks? Uh, because if you think about it, like let's look at a deep cool Captain 240EX, right? That's a copper CPU block. It might be nickel plated on the inside. It really doesn't matter because nickel and copper are pretty close to each other on the, on the reactivity series. Uh, and you will have a degree of galvanic corrosion there, regardless of if nickel is reactive on its own or not. The introduction of two metals with an electrolyte is never a good thing. Um, so how do they get away with it? And it comes back to the coolant again. So AIOs actually use a special anti-corrosive coolant. It's not gonna be the same. It's not gonna be uniform for every AIO out there, but most of them use like, let's say Asetek pumps uh, with a certain degree of aluminum in the radiator and copper or nickel plated copper on the block are going to have a special coolant that prevents for a certain degree of time any substantial degree of galvanic corrosion. Typically what will happen with AIO first is either the pump will fail or you'll have a leak in the system either near the radiator connection with the tubing or the CPU block connection with the tubing. The block itself won't leak unless it's using some very cheap plastic housing and it just snaps under pressure uh, and the radiator won't leak either in most cases because it's solid metal. The manufacturers of these products know this and that's why the warranties usually extend to the point where they expect the D5 pump to fail. It's around four or five years or so. That's when you get a really good AIO and you have no other issues apart from that. Now, galvanic corrosion might play a small role in allowing the pump to fail. Again, you'd be you know, circulating aluminum particles throughout the loop over and over and over again. Uh, those channels get clogged up. You have a lot of back pressure. The pump could fail, right? But galvanic corrosion, again, it does not, it, it does not happen anywhere near the degree you guys probably think it does in an AIO because of those anti-corrosive additives, which are very effective in a small closed system. So why then do manufacturers use nickel plating over copper CPU blocks, let's say, or, or graphics card blocks, uh, you know, even if they aren't using aluminum rads? And that's how you know that it's not because of the anti-corrosive properties of nickel, because nickel and copper are actually very similar. They will both act as cathodes when you introduce aluminum into a closed loop with an electrolyte like water. This was something for the longest time I did not know. I honestly believe that nickel plating prevented galvanic corrosion, but in truth, nickel and copper are very similar in terms of how they behave as cathodes when aluminum again is introduced in the loop. So uh, yeah, interesting, something I learned throughout this process and what it ultimately comes back to is the coolant use. The coolant additives are supposed to mitigate the effects, the long-term effects of galvanic corrosion. Now those additives might wear off over time and that might be the extent to which uh, an AIO warranty, let's say, lasts, uh, but what you really should be concerned about is the type of fluid that you're adding into a loop that might mix aluminum radiators with copper or nickel plated copper blocks. We've seen horror stories of you know galvanic corrosion taking place in custom loops. We all know what it looks like. We don't want it. And that's why a lot of people tend to be very weary of aluminum radiators. I don't blame you. Look, if that's the reason why you don't buy a thermal tape kit, I'm not trying to sell you on these, uh, then so be it. I understand why um, I've worked with both aluminum and copper rads and I understand that copper is definitely uh, a better radiator type to use because most of the CPU and GPU blocks out there are nickel plated or bare copper blocks. Uh, so in terms of compatibility, yeah, copper is better, but in terms of the material used in general, it's not aluminum's fault. It's just the fact that companies tend to want to combine both because aluminum, when it comes to a radiator, is fairly cheap. Uh, you know, a, a, an aluminum radiator in, compared to a copper radiator, there's a huge difference in terms of how much each weighs, uh, and aluminum is much cheaper in general than copper. So yeah, it's a cost saving measure, and I think that's ultimately what it comes back to. Uh, but you shouldn't just, you know, cry red flag when you see these two things combined, especially in a kit. Look, if Thermaltake knew that galvanic corrosion was going to take place on a rather accelerated scale, they wouldn't bother combining these. They've run thousands of tests. This is why they recommend C1000 coolant, and that's why it's included in the kit, because it is supposed to mitigate to a very substantial extent to galvanic corrosion that would otherwise take place. So 
You can take that with a grain of salt. You can take it at face value. I really don't care. Uh, but just know that AIOs do it all the time. They literally all the time. Um, and this isn't the exact same fluid, the exact same coolant that you'll find in an AIO, but it's very similar. It has similar properties. And its ultimate goal is, again, to allow heat transfer, right? That's the purpose of, of uh, getting heat from the CPU block to the radiators. Uh, and water has, in general, very high heat capacity. So it's a great fluid for that. But it's also to mitigate those effects of galvanic corrosion that would otherwise take place if you just had bare copper or nickel plated copper in a closed system with bare aluminum and water as an electrolyte. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was a little scattered, but uh, this was something I was just reading about recently. A lot of you brought up this issue and I felt like making a dedicated video regarding this topic because uh, you see it all the time, right? You see it with AIOs. And if you've ever wondered how an AIO gets away with it, it's the fluid. It's the, the anti-corrosive properties in the fluid that prevent galvanic corrosion from taking place on a, on a long-term scale. Uh, and in general, when you see a kit like Thermaltake, uh, like Thermaltake's M360 Plus that we reviewed, uh, combine an aluminum rad with a nickel-plated copper CPU block, be sure to use the fluid that they include in the kit. There's a reason why it's there. They tell you to only use this for their kits. And the reason why is because if you don't, if you use something from Primo Chill or Mayhems or what have you, then you are nine times out of 10, maybe even 9.999 times out of 10, gonna have issues with buildup, with gunk in your loop because of the two different metals being combined in the same closed system. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Thumbs down for the opposite, or if you hate everything about life, click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. You can sponsor us if you wanna get more fancy with it, get special badges and icons and chat boxes and comment sections down below. Join our local Discord, it's free to do. It's uh, kind of tag teamed by Brian at Techia City and us here at Science Studio, and we'll see you in the next video. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.